And on that note, we now turn to our collusion and corruption story. Perhaps the biggest cybersecurity attack in history was carried out on the U.S. right under our noses. The cyber actors gained secretive backdoor access on SolarWinds software, which is used by the Energy Department and National Nuclear Security Administration, which maintains the U.S. nuclear weapons stockpile. It's also used by numerous other administrations and large companies. Perhaps it could even have ties to Dominion, but that's yet to be seen. It appears the hackers have had access for months. Thomas Bosser, a former Trump Homeland Security advisor, warned the Russians have had access to a considerable number of important and sensitive networks for six to nine months, and that the logical conclusion is that we must act as if the Russian government has control of all the networks it has penetrated. With me now to discuss is National and Homeland Security Analyst Adam Roosevelt. Welcome, Adam. Thank you for having me. So great. So we recently learned that the Treasury and Commerce Departments were the victims of this attack. But now we know other agencies such as the DHS, the NIH and State Department may have been affected as well, along with hundreds of Fortune 500 companies. What's going on here? You know, I think the cyber issue has been of question for several years now, and we need to prioritize this. I think we can all agree. The Russians have been involved in dynamic trade craft for a long time. They want to get superiority of multi-domain operations, cyber, space, land, maritime security. What's happening is the, I would say, the inability for us to be prepared, and we now have to put cyber as our number one national security uh, thing. So if we don't do that, we're going to see more of these attacks, and this is running rampant through our government now. And with CISA working to work with the CSPs and the vendors, we're going to have to get ahead of this. And this is just a very difficult time with a very complex issue for cybersecurity in our nation. And how was this figured out? How did they find out about this attack? Because it seems like it's been going on since perhaps uh, as late as or as early as March of this year. I would anticipate that they were working with FireEye and FireEye just recently uh, was also hacked. And we know that the Russians, I would say, were able to obtain dual use technology, which is essentially commercial and military grade. So the FireEye folks, they are always involved in forensics. And they discovered this, I assume, uh, with this forensics investigations and determined that this was a problem and then alerted the authorities. And now the FBI and other agencies are working to make sure we mitigate this threat. And how does something like this even happen in the first place? Is there a weak passwords? Is it malware? What exactly is going on? How are hackers able to get into such uh, secure areas in our government? Cyber is a very complex discussion. I'll tell you that there's zero day exploitations that you, you try to plan for, but you can't plan for them. And then they occur. You need to make sure you respond. There's backdoor intrusion abilities. There's the front door through DDoS, what we call distribution a denial of service and all these different elements of the cyber apparatus. The problem is a few things. Architecture. The, the problem is software engineering. There's a tremendous amount of this that needs to be discussed as a whole of government approach for us to get ahead of this. And now I'll say third party targeting of CSPs and vendors that they can compromise third party trusted vendors and, and get into our networks. So where does the U.S. go from here then? What kind of reforms would you like to see to prevent something like this from happening again? I would say we need to look at fast tracking CMMC. That's been discussed right now. We're implementing that uh, across the federal government. I would also say we need to start looking at an allied approach. We're looking at making sure that we have an offensive joint capability with NATO allies to strike our adversaries. And we would obviously explore sanctions and things of that nature. We need to get more aggressive, I would say, as a nation so that we can ensure we protect our national security assets. It's going to be compliance capabilities, and it's going to be the military and diplomatic opportunities to use our tools. And of course, this former Trump administration official, Bossert, he's saying that we need to act as if the Russian government has control of all the networks that has penetrated. Is that the right mindset to have moving forward to be better safe than SARS? You just assume that many more areas have been compromised. I would say you only have a few resources when you put the whole nation on alert. So we have to be very realistic about where we are in this investigation to ensure that we're committing all the available resources to where it needs to be. These are diversion tactics as well from the Russians. And if we're putting all our resources on one focus, they could be doing other things. So I think we need to look at this investigation very close. Let's pinpoint where the issues are and then apply the necessary resources to where that's at and 
When it comes to cyber issues, of course, big names, Russia, China, they seem to be some of the, the main bad actors behind some of this. When it comes to Russia, I've heard it said that perhaps the reason why Russia invests so much time and energy into cyber hacking going in the back door is because they can't necessarily compete with the U.S. economically or militarily, whereas China unfortunately can. Though, of course, China does uh, a lot of this hacking as well and stealing of intellectual property theft from here from the U.S. But is that why Russia seems to be one of the main bad actors behind a lot of these cyber attacks that we've been seeing? Every nation is trying to participate in this great competition of what we call getting ahead and winning the war. This is something that is just important for the American people to know that we're in this big competition. So I would say the Russians, the Chinese, the Iranians are always looking at distant ways to attack our critical infrastructure, to obtain access to our IP and effectively turn our weapons against us. And we make sure when we plan to make sure we can't allow these adversaries to continue on this path. And again, that's why I think we need a joint strike capability with our NATO allies. Adam, I really appreciate you joining us tonight. My pleasure. Thank you. And up next, we know Biden has many handlers. We'll a mask to borrow a term, one of them, after the break. <laughs> 